welcome to the Circle of Hecker. I'm Lady Amaris. Now I have another video of uh, purchases that I've that I've um, purchased from uh, another store um, in Perth, Western Australia. Now this store is called Herbcraft, and I went to it um, yesterday and um, just had a little bit of a look around. It is a, a relatively new store. They used to have a store in Armadale in uh, Western Australia and then they've moved to uh, Mannington. Um, I'll have a, um, the information down below. They have a Facebook page and uh, a website so that you can have, um, have a little bit of a look. They also have a store in Albany in Western Australia, so a little bit further down south than, um, than I can actually drive to. So I'll be um, just showing you what I, what I got from that store. Now, um, uh, the first, first thing I'll show you is uh, I got a few, um, a few um, herbs. It's called Herbcraft, so you can go past getting a couple of herbs. Now they have their herbs in a little packet where they have their their information so it's kind of um, purpose purpose built packets of, of herbs um, and they also have the best before date. Now these herbs are uh, used basically for health reasons so that is why they've got the, the used by date there so best before date uh, and instructions on how to use them as a um, as a tonic. So here I've got uh, lavender lavender flowers, and the, uh, the the front says it's used as a sedative. Uh, it's used for managing tension, headaches, uh, restlessness, insomnia, and calming the nerves. So it's a calming um, a calming and, and a sedative. It's also used to assist in colic and gastric wind. So hopefully I don't have any gastric wind that I'll need uh, the lavender flowers for. It sounds a little bit, um, a little bit too real, and um, and it's got a little bit of a dosage and, and what to do on the back. So that's quite nice. So because sometimes you buy herbs and and you find out from from the person that you bought them from bits and pieces, but when you get home, then you kind of forgotten what it is that you need to do. So it's always nice to have something on the back. Um, now the magical properties of the lavender um, are again they're calming. Um, it's a calming flower. They use um, lavender flowers are used for uh, love spells. They're used for if you're in a household and you want that calming energy in the household. If your your house is a little bit erratic and and lots of drama going on and you want to have that little bit of calming influence, then using the lavender flowers. Um, is um, is quite beneficial for um, for that for that's calming properties. Uh, it's also good for, as I said, love spells and anything to do with bringing people together, bringing some harmony into into an area. So that's quite nice for the for the lavender. Um, the second one that I got was angelica root. You can see there. So again, they've got their their little. Um, logo and their little bits and pieces um, and angelica root uh, for the um, health reasons is good for the respiratory tract so it's used for mild respiratory ailments gastrointestinal upsets due to stress and assists with um, the circulation now um, again with the gastrointestinal maybe someone's trying to tell me something that i'm a little bit uh, a little bit full of wind, maybe I'm a blowhard or something. Um, and again, on the back it has dosage um, and um, what to do, what to use, and a nice little best before date because again, it is to do with internal use. So having that best before date is um, always a good thing. You want to know that your herbs are fresh um, and uh, able to do what they need to do. So in the magical properties, your angelica root is just think angels so it's angel root so if you're doing anything with any archangels then angelica root is a good is a good one to use uh, angelica root is aligned with um, the archangel Michael and uh, Gabriel and um, it's also used uh, if you 
feel the need to um, have some protection so you can wear it wear it on your person as a in a little bag as a protection charm it's good as a hex breaker it's good for uncrossings it's good for you know just just as a, a, a normal protection it's also good for promoting um, prosperity and if you put it together with the lavender it's good to have that promotion promotion of a happy home uh, a happy um, happy environment. So putting the two together is, is always a, a good thing as well. The more herbs that you can kind of bring together, the more the, the vibration is just a little bit higher and the, the likelihood of you achieving your goal is a little bit better. So there's the, the herbs from that store. Um, now a couple of other things that I purchased was um, something that I thought was quite funny. And I just got it as a little bit of a joke, um, a bit of zombie repellent uh, incense. So I thought that was quite funny. Um, and uh, if you read the back, um, it is um, the back, other side, other back. Um, it says, warning, zombie repellent is manufactured at our secure research facility where the Scenarium virus is carefully investigated. It works by masking the smell of living flesh with an aroma that intrigues the human senses, interesting, while administering a sense of death to all reanimated beings. Many zombies were harmed and killed in the manufacture of this product. So uh, a little bit of, little bit of fun. Um, it smells it, it it smells very odd. I I don't actually find the smell appealing, um, and that's probably because um, I'm not a zombie, or maybe it's zombie repellent. Um, um, maybe I am a zombie and I am being repelled. I'm not too sure. Sorry about the flare there, um, but uh, a little bit of fun. It has a it has a kind of a spicy a spicy smell, but. Um, May, yeah, maybe like old old shoe spice, maybe maybe a bit of feet. So maybe maybe that's what the dead smell like, a bit of uh, old shoes and feet. Um, <laughs> so a bit of fun. The other bit of incense that I got was a bit of dragon's blood. Now again, dragon's blood is really good. So it's got a little bit of gold flaring there, so hopefully it doesn't flare too much. So I've got a bit of dragon's blood. Um, I've had different types of dragon's blood. I like to, usually to use the dragon's blood that is um, that is in the, the rock form of incense, um, but I do have it in the, um, the stick incense as well because sometimes it's just too hard to have the the, the, um, the charcoal blocks and the and the rocks. So the the stick incense is good for um, if you're traveling, but also um, if you're just starting out and just getting getting all of these different things um, is just a little bit too much. Um, having a bit of stick incense is is good when you're on the go. Um, so this is a bit of dragon's blood. I do like dragon's blood, and dragon's blood is good for uh, just normal fumigation of, of your of your house if you're feeling a little bit. Um, if you feel like some little little greedlies or just a little bit of um, energy that's um, just just a little bit kind of funky, um, it's always good to burn a little bit of dragon's blood, and that um, that does clears the place quite quite well. And it's not as smoky a smell as if you're using sage. Sage kind of smells a little bit like. Um, you know, burning twigs and well, well, literally that's what it is but dragon's blood has a little bit more of a um, bit of more of a sweeter smell so it leaves the area a little bit uh, sweeter than than it smells like you've just burnt um, burnt the dinner and um, it also adds a little bit of oomph to any of your your spells just adding a little bit of dragon's blood so we have that now a couple of other little things that I purchased um, now these smaller little items um, they packaged up in these tiny little tiny little bags which I thought was very was very cute um, because if if you were going to give these as little gifts then you don't need to do a lot 
with that you've already got this in a little bag and it's and it's kind of quite nice and it's all individual so I've got um, first two I got um, a couple of stones so having these wrapped up the information wrapped up with the stone I think is quite nice because sometimes you might get a few stones and you have the, the information there and then again when you get home you can't, can't remember what it was that you purchased and was this for this stone, was this for that stone, so I think that's quite a nice little idea. So this one I got a piece of amber. I've got, uh, I've got to redo my nail polish so um, excuse the a bit of a feral look going on there, but um, I don't know, every witch needs to have their, their stick and mine's nail polish that's a bit, a bit off. Um, so a bit of, um, a bit of amber. So amber, uh, according to the little note here, um, eases pressure, improves ability to make decisions, um, strengthens memory and intellect, increases connection to nature and heals the blood and abdominal area. So we have a nice piece of amber. Now amber isn't actually a stone, it's a resin. It's sap from, um, from a tree um, and a lot of the times um, you will find some of the, the older type of amber so if you have a look, you can't see any in here, but some of the older type of amber would have trapped insects in there um, and um, sometimes a little like prehistoric insects. And uh, if you've watched any of the, um, the, uh, the movies with the, the prehistoric animals, it just evades me what the name of that movie is, um, Jurassic Park. If you've watched any of the Jurassic Parks, their whole thing is about extracting um, dinosaur DNA from, from amber. So amber is about connecting with the earth and amber is, um, is prized, one of the prized um, stones, obviously it's a resin, one of the prized um, pieces in witchcraft. Many witches like to have amber jewellery. So we have that one there. Um, we also have another little one that we've got packaged up here and this one here is Malachite. So we've got Malachite there. Oops. And this the Malachite is really nice that you can see the striations, you can see how the different variations of the stone and how this is made up of compressed layer upon layer over many 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 years and it's just quite beautiful. So malachite improve, improves, malachite improves expression, strengthens the brain, protects against accidents and is a powerful healer especially for the lower back. Now I like malachite because it, it's almost like um, a piece of, piece of the earth. It's got that green and green is always nice for the heart chakra so it's helping you, helping you uh, with that, that area um, of the heart. So we've got that nice green and um, it just reminds me of the earth and um, of almost, almost like leaves and the different striations in the leaves. Quite nice. And lastly, out of this little selection, I got a little bracelet. Now this is a hematite bracelet. Can do that a little better. So it's a hematite bracelet. Now it's got a nice little tree. So we think of that as the tree of life, the world tree. We have our uh, pentacle and we have our little tri oh, I'm going to butcher it again, tri tricycle. Yeah, if anyone's watched uh, any of the Charmed series they'll, uh, they'll notice that that's uh, used to death in there because I think they, they found the, the pentacle a little bit too confronting at that 
that time. But um, we've got hematite. Now hematite is always good for protection. Uh, it's good for, for grounding and, and, um, and uh, so it protects you from unwanted energies. Um, it help, it, think of it as a shield if you have... Um, if you're someone who is very susceptible to other people's energies, if you, if you think of yourself as an empath and you, uh, you wear a little bit of hematite, it just helps to, um, to deaden that, um, that feeling of being overwhelmed by other people's energy. It's, and think of it as your shield. Um, so when you have your hematite on, you, you, know, you can just say, um, if, you're, uh, if you're into Star Trek, you know, shields up. Um, and uh, so you have that with your um, with your hematite. So hematite is always nice to have in different bits of jewellery because it's dual dual function. Not only does it look nice, but it functions as your as your um, protection, as your shield. And it's um, just a little bit nicer to have than to have just a, a piece you know piece of stone in your in your pocket. Um, so you can have the the two having a dual function. So I thought that was quite nice and um, I'll be giving that a little bit of a clean and a bit of a consecration at the full moon which will be coming up in a couple of days. So um, and I'll, I'll be start, I'll start to wear that. So that's a, a nice little piece. And um, okay, lastly I purchased this no, it was not lastly, sorry, second lastly. I purchased this candle. Okay, you can see an end there. It's up the wick. Yeah, like most candles, it usually has a bit of wax and a wick. That's how you can tell that they're a, they're a candle. Now this obviously, as you can see, hopefully, there we go, that it's in glass. Okay, now this is a seven day candle. And um, it's a black candle, so black as we've, we've probably discussed before, black candles are about um, absorbing energy. Okay, so if you want to, um, and it's used for protection in many, many cases, so um, it's about absorbing any negative energy and, um, and obviously converting that. White candles are about projection, black are about absorption. Black candles can also be used if you want to do a little bit of, um, a little bit of, uh, let's say, let's call it nasty, a little bit nasty smells, it's nasty. So the black candle can also be used um, in a negative way if you want to send any nasty energy to someone, um, if you want to do any, any hexing, if that's what you're into. But most of the time, uh, people use black candles as a way of absorbing negative energy as opposed to as a repellent, which they would use with the white candle. Now, um, this one here on the side um, says, obviously keep out of reach of children, children and pets. You can never work with children and pets. Um, and um, never have a burning candle unattended. Obviously, that's just a little bit of common sense, really. Um, and it was made in the Dominican Republic, which, um, which says to me that it's probably a little bit more authentic than um, being made in other places because um, areas like the Dominican Republic and um, South America and various other um, um, places um, use candles in this fashion quite a lot. Um, it's used a lot in um, Santeria, it's used a lot in um, Vaduan, it's used a lot in even Hoodoo um, because it's a seven day candle. It is kind of, it is protected um, because it's in the glass. Now as this one is a glass that has nothing on it, you, a lot of the times you will see um, maybe pictures of saints, um, various other other pictures. So if you had a candle, maybe a green candle in, inside, um, and it was, say, for luck or for money, for prosperity, a pink candle would be for love, and sometimes you would have some kind of picture on the front. Now this means because this doesn't have anything, I can put whatever it is that I want on here. Now if I want to keep this as a specific candle for, um, because it's a black candle, for repelling negativity, then I can then draw sigils on here to do with repelling 
negative energy. I can have a piece of paper that I can print out off a computer and then I can wrap around here again that can have sigils, can have images, it can have anything that I would like that will help to focus that energy um, or, or the t intent of what I want this candle to do. So again, if it's to repel negative energy, maybe it's a, ne a certain type of negative energy or um, it's just negative energy um, in, in, uh, in general. So those sigils or an image to help focus on that. Um, also, once this is finished, once this is burnt down, I can reuse this because it's glass. So I can now um, then put new wax in here and reuse. Okay, so what you would do after that is obviously you would um, consecrate this candle first, use it for what you intend. Once it's finished, then you would clean it out and make it as if it is uh, uh, neutral, put new uh, wax in and when you're putting the new wax in that gives you the opportunity to then put things in that you would like So this candle here at the moment is is pre-made Okay, so it would need to be cleansed, but if I wanted to dress this candle um, And we'll go through dressing in another uh, another video But it would mean that I would put certain um, oils and certain bits of incense um, in and on the candle now, if I'm making the candle myself, I can incorporate that into the candle as I'm making it. So I can have layer upon layer upon layer where I put a little bit of um, put a little bit of uh, wax in. Then I can add my herbs and my spices and whatever else I need. Then another layer of wax. So I can layer it as I go. So I, as I'm doing it, I'm putting intent in and I'm putting adding energy into this so at the end because it's something that I and I've put layer upon layer of intent in then that is a more potent candle than one that you can buy in a store I always recommend that you try and make as much of your magical tools and your magical uh, bits and pieces as you can but when you're starting off buying things is totally acceptable but as you go along and you start to become a little bit more proficient and a little bit more understanding of energy the more that you can make and the more that you can put into a spell, into a candle, the more potent it is going to be. So, um, so I will use this candle and um, I'll then use this as examples of how to use it in different ways. So we will be um, dressing this candle and then I'll be using it um, and then once it's used, I will then go through um, how to make your own candle and how to pour it in. Um, a couple of other little things. This one here again is a good, good candle. As you can see, the wick is right in the center. You want to make sure that the wick is in the center and that it is going to burn straight in the center. Because um, in many traditions, how the candle burns and how um, it, it works out is to whether your spell has worked or not, or whether you need to redo your spell or keep going with your spell. So if, say again, if this, if this is a candle for protection, okay, and um, as it's burnt down, you find that the glass is dark and, um, and smoky, it means that one, your spell has worked in the fact that it has repelled or it has absorbed that negative energy but at the same time it means that you still need to do it again because you still have that blackness so when the candle has burnt clean so if it goes all the way down to the bottom and it is clean on the outside there's no darkness there's no um, there's no blackness from the from the candle. There's no soot on the side. There's no strange little marks or any um, weirdness. Then it means that your your spell is successful and that everything has been cleaned and cleared. But if you do have any kind of smokiness, then you need to redo the spell, redo until you get that cleanness. Now, keeping in mind that you need to know what type of wax is in that candle before you start looking at 
how the candle burns. Because if you have wax that has a high paraffin, I'm not off the top of my head, I'm not totally sure, but the higher the paraffin, the more it's going to burn and soot and darken. Okay, so you need to kind of maybe do a little bit more research and find out what type of wax and how the wax burns. So again, if you're making your own, you know what the wax is in there and then you'll be able to um, ascertain with, with a, a, a degree of, of certainty that the reason that it is burning is because of what needs to be done with the spell, not because the wax itself is the type of wax that soots everything up. Okay, I hope that makes sense. I'll, um, I'll talk about that more when we're actually making, making a candle. But just be mindful that different types of wax will do different types of things to your candle um, and that doesn't necessarily mean that your spell is not working or working. Okay, so please keep that in mind when you're checking out how your candle is burning. Um, okay, that's it with the candle. Um, and uh, one last little thing that I purchased was another thing that I thought that was quite quite a little bit funny because um, you always seem to be a little bit dubious when you're buying certain things so um, you could find out whether this is or not quite easily but um, I just find it a little bit more of a curio type thing. So I bought some coffin nails and um, you can see them there on the side here. Now uh, I haven't pulled this out to have a look at the information but it's got quite a lot of information on coffin nails which I think is quite nice. It's good to have a little bit of an understanding about some of the things that you're purchasing. Um, and coffin nails are used for lots of different things. They can be used in voodoo dolls, they can be used for um, cursing, they can be used for they can be used for any manner of thing, they can be used for protection. Um, I know that I um, received, I might, I might find it and show it to you in another video if I remember, but um, I received um, a nice little um, present from two lovely witches that I met when I was in Salem and uh, they were, it was um, two coffin nails and they were um, done as an equal cross and then bound with red, um, red cotton um, I think it is um, and that was used as a, as a protection so they can be used as a protection they can be used for um, cursing um, you know many things that um, have have a dual purpose they can be used for um, helping and they can be used for harming it all depends on the intent of the practitioner as to as to what that is going to be so never look at anything at face value and think oh well that's that's evil because I've been told that's evil anything can be used for evil and anything can be used for good it all depends on the person that is using it and the level of their their intent and also their imagination. Um, yeah, so coffin nails um, and uh, used for protection um, and used for many other things. Um, I think that's it for the things that I that I purchased. So a couple of other things that I got, which was at the front. Um, at the cash register is they have a few little things that they they do people at herb craft they, they have um, a little a couple of little brochures for what they do um, this one here is another one here and it just says that they are they help you know, herbal remedies natural alternatives skin care they do Wiccan supplies so if you're uh, if you want to purchase an athema uh, if you um, are wanting little cauldrons or, or different things they do oils they have a large selection of books some of the largest selection of of actual witchcraft books that I've seen in Perth for for quite a while so um, if that's what you want if you want books if you want to to buy some of the tools they have lovely wands they have staffs they have very very nice bits and pieces uh, so if that's what you're after 
um, going to herb craft um, if you're in Perth, Western Australia, um, can be um, a spot where you can buy some of the tools. Now, tools such as the Athema and a lot of other wands and stuff are nice, but they're not necessary. It's not like, oh, I can't practice witchcraft until I have this, until I have this Athema, I must have this Athema, or I must have this wand, um, and then I'll be able to practice witchcraft. It's not like that. Um, you can practice witchcraft with a matchstick, um, a, a wooden spoon, and, um, and a kitchen knife if, if that's what you need to do. Uh, it's not about the pretty items. Um, but if you would like to buy some of the pretty items, please do, but don't break the bank just because you think that you need to have these items and that having these items means that your spell is going to work or that you're going to be a better witch or um, whatever it is that, that you think. Having these peripheral outer items does not help your energy in any way. It's what's on the inside, it's what's inside the witch that it that comes out that is the, the, the magic. It's not what you have on the outside, okay? You have to start on the inside for it to come out on the outside. You can't work the other way around. It's not like I'm going to fake it until I make it by having all this paraphernalia and dressing up like a witch. You need to have it on the inside first. You need to cultivate on the inside first. And if that means having a wooden spoon and having a normal kitchen knife if you want to use for to direct energy, then so be it. You don't need the expensive pretty athema or the expensive pretty wand. A stick and a normal knife or even your fingers will work. But with that said, you still can buy these wonderful little items if that's what you want. Crystals, giftware. Um, and in this little brochure here, we have uh, a whole array of some of the um, herbs that they do have um, and their medical properties. They don't have the magical properties, but they do have the medical properties. Um, and I think that is because um, playing up the magical properties is, um, is not something that um, legally they, they are allowed to do, but they can, um, they can do the medical properties. So that's quite, um, quite a nice and handy little thing to, to take. Um, they have another brochure with some of the things that they do. Um, they have some complementary therapies, um, divination, um, various crystal healings that they offer. Uh, now I cannot say um, one way or another how good their practitioners are because I haven't, uh, I haven't tried any of these. I do know that they offer them so if you do happen to have a little bit of a, a look and try some of these, um, they do hot stone massage, they do pranic touch healing, um, few other things. So if you do try some of that um, and you have um, a comment, maybe leave a comment down below as to how you, um, what your experience was and that will be, uh, will be quite a nice, um, nice exercise because one, I, I can't comment on something that I haven't, haven't done so I don't know one way or the other whether they're, they're good at what they do or not. Um, Yes. So um, the other thing um, is that I did mention in the previous video about how I feel when I go into a store. And um, now the store, the store here um, is nice. It's it's set out quite well, and the and the staff are very friendly. Um, but I I don't know if it's and I'm assuming that it's because it's a new store um, that um, they haven't had a chance to actually build up the energy yet. And um, but when you go into a store that that is like this, it is um, is about alternative um, therapies. It's about um, witchcraft. It's about herbs. You would expect um, a level of, of energy in that in that area that that said to you, yes, this is a place that that um, that that kind of knows its stuff. 
when you go into, into these types, types of stores. Now, as I said, it could be because it's just new and it hasn't had a chance to build that up. But when I walked into the store, again, it was a nice store, but it was a bit dead when it came to, to the energy. There was no spark. There was no sparkle. Um, and that um, and that's just, just how I, I, I felt about, about certain, um, certain areas. Um, yeah, so again, it may change as, as time goes on because it is a new, is a new store in a new, in a new area and that can be built up. Um, so that's my, my, um, my little take on Herbcraft. I will go back there again um, and get a few more things here and there and obviously just check to see how the energy is going. Um, and, um, but I would, be, I would like to know if anyone has... Um, been to the store themselves and what their experiences are because the more the more people that go to different stores um, and um, you just get a different perspective because um, this is my perspective but it's not the only perspective and um, yes uh, that's around about that's around about it um, hopefully you enjoyed that and please do do let me know how you how you fare with the with the store itself um, they have quite a few bits and pieces that have been missing from Perth for a while so um, it would be nice to see a few more stores that are um, at a similar um, bent where it's it's to do with witchcraft it's to do with some of the occult bits and pieces because it's very hard to find any of those types of stores in Perth uh, and, and most of the time we would buy things online but when it comes to buying certain things you want to be able to be able to touch be able to feel and 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 know whether that's um, right for you and you can't do that when you buy something online um, so having a few more stores where you can have that tactile uh, that tactile feeling of when you purchase something would be good um, and yeah, just having a few more stores. So if anyone's out there that's watching this and is thinking about setting up a some kind of a, a cult new age store, please, please do. Um, because the more the merrier, uh, the more that it's out there, the more diverse that it is, um, the better it is for, for the people of Perth. Uh, because I feel that stores of this nature are our, are our churches. It's the place that people of a like mind can go and to buy and to and to talk to people of a like mind and and to bounce ideas off of people and and if you have no um, have no connections to other occult practitioners to other witches or other covens this is the place that you usually have that stepping stone of someone knows someone and if you want to get into a group then usually you can go to you, these stores but because we don't have many stores in Perth we did have a few but a lot of them closed down that that stepping stone for many people is is now gone and um, and you know, other other religions, other other um, places, um, spiritual places have that. You have the place that has the yoga. You have um, you have um, Christian churches. You have mosques. You have synagogues. But when it comes to witches and and Wiccans, there aren't a lot of places that you can go and talk to other witches in a, a setting where then you can go all right well maybe you need this and maybe you need this and then you have it there um, it's a little bit hard so these stores are kind of a lifeline to many people and the more that we have in our area in in Perth the better because um, it just means not only um, a witch's and witchcraft and paganism are seen as something that is a little bit more um, understood because the more of these places that you have the more that it's seen as normal but if you have small little pockets here and there then it's that weird shop over there 
it's not, oh, well, yeah, if you want to have, you want to get some candles or you want to get a goddess statue, yeah, just go down the street, there's one there. Or if you don't want to go down the street, there's another one a couple of blocks down the other side. You know, it's, it's, it's something that's easy. It's almost like going to the corner store and, and getting, a, um, getting some milk and bread. Um, but the, and that only happens when we have more stores like that. Um, and so hopefully I would like to see a few more in Perth. Um, because I like going into stores and I like to touch and I like to, to feel the energy as opposed to buying things online. So I hope you enjoyed that. I will be going to a few different other stores as, um, as the weeks go. So doing a little bit of um, secret shopper um, and um, just letting you know some of my some of my experiences have said these are my experiences they may not be someone else's experiences but this is how I have, um, have um, come across some of these places so I, um, again um, Herbcraft the information is down below um, and um, have a great day um, merry meet, merry part and merry meet again blessed be send that beautiful energy up into the heavens it's so another very powerful cleansing incense that's often used by witches is dragon's blood. Dragon's blood, when it goes onto the charm,